have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Akanimo Essiet. Uh, his title of his talk is Electrosurgical Principles in the Control of Surgical Blood Loss. A little bit about Dr. Essiet. He's a professor of urological surgery at the University of Calabar in Nigeria and the chief of urology in the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital. His special interest is in reconstructive and pediatric urology. He is the past head of the Department of Surgery and holds the fellowship of the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria, where he once served as third Senate member for the Faculty of Surgery. He's also a fellow of the American College of Surgeons, a fellow of the International College of Surgeons, where he is president-elect of the Nigerian section, and he's due to be installed into office in about a month. He holds a diploma in minimally ac minimal access and laparoscopic surgery, and he has to his credit well over 50 publications as peer-reviewed articles in top surgical journals and book chapters. Professor Essiet is an actively practicing surgeon and applies his trade with passion. So with that, we look forward, Dr. Essiet, to hearing your presentation and welcome. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. We're discussing bloodless surgery. One of the ways to prevent blood transfusion is to focus on minimizing blood loss during surgical procedures. At the background, blood is frequently blood loss is frequently an indication for blood transfusion. So avoidance or limiting of blood loss thus is thus a sound strategy for avoidance of transfusion. Electrosurgical methods are effective for prevention and for limiting blood loss during surgical procedures. The benefits of electrosurgical methods are maximized and inherent risks of the method minimized by proper understanding and utilization of the methods. This presentation seeks to highlight some of the surgical principles of better understanding and utilization in control of surgical blood loss. For affiliations, I'm a professor of urological surgery that's already been said, West of Calabar, and chief consultant urologist to the West of Calabar Teaching Hospital. No disclosures, but I need to say that this presentation is at the instance of the organizer of the blood medicine, Bloodless Medicine and Surgery Week for 2023. So if we look at the electricity, properties, and characteristics, current electrons orbit nuclei of atoms and flow flow of electrons from, from one atom to the orbit of an adjacent atom generates flow of electricity, electric current, which is measured in amps. Voltage is the natural force that gives electrons the impetus to flow from one atom to the other, and is measured in volts. An unimpeded pathway through which electrons or currents flow freely is referred to as a circuit. So resistance to flow of electrons in a circuit generates heat. The resistance is referred to as impedance and is measured in ohms. So we look at the electromagnetic spectrum. Standard household electric current alternates at a frequency of about 60 cycles per second, or hertz, 60 hertz. At this frequency, current causes excessive neuromuscular stimulation and could possibly lead to electrocution. At 100,000 cycles per second, or 100 kilohertz, neuromuscular stimulation ceases. And so electrosurgery is safely performed at frequencies above 100 kilohertz, that's at radio frequencies. So if we, this is the electromagnetic spectrum at 60 hertz. This is where household appliances are commonly used. And at 100 hertz, muscle and nerve stimulation ceases, leaving this safe area for electrosurgical practice between above 200 uh, uh, kilohertz. And then an electrosurgical generator raises, what an electrosurgical generator does is simply to raise the 60 cycles per second current to an above 200,000 cycles per second, making it safe to pass through the body. Then principles of Electro-surgery. Electrocautery. This is a term that is sometimes erroneously used interchangeably with electro uh, electrosurgery. Electrocautery uses direct current. That's electrons flowing in one direction 
while electrosurge involves the use of alternating current. With electrocautery, current does not traverse the patient. Just a heated wire comes in contact with the tissue as shown here and does what it needs to do. While electrosurge with the patient is incorporated into the circuit as seen here, that's the circuit with the patient as part of the circuit. And the current actually goes through the patient as shown here. Electrosurgical principles in the operating room. The circuit has a generator as a source of voltage and electric current flow. The alternating current depicted here by arrows, double-sided arrows, flows from the generator around the circuit and back to the generator. And there are a couple of pathways of grounding the current, namely the operation, the operating table, the stirrups and staff members, equipment, et cetera, for safety as current being grounded. So electrosurgery and control of surgical blood loss. The patient's tissues provided resistance to current flow or impedance, and this leads to generation of heat as the electrons, as the electrons overcome the resistance. The heat generated is harnessed for control of surgical blood loss in various ways, like cutting, coagulating, and vibration. There are two, basically two types of circuits, the monopolar circuit, the most commonly deployed circuit. It comprises a generator, an active electrode, the patient himself, and the patient return electrode. The active electrode is in the OP side, in the operation side, while the patient return electrode is at some point, some other point on the patient body, usually closer to the uh, active electrode. Current traverses the body as shown here to complete the circuit, returns to the generator. The bipolar circuit, the active electrode and the return electrodes both function at site of surgery through the two prongs of the forceps as shown here, and no patient return electrode is required. The only tissue, only the tissue grabs between the two prongs are what's included in the circuit. So this completes the circuit. The current flows here and goes through the, just the tissue that the forceps grabs and goes back. So effects of uh, electricity, electro current. You have pure cut and coagulation currents. Generators are made to produce various forms, various wave, wave, wave forms with varied tissue effects. A constant waveform at low voltage on a 100% duty cycle, that's the on time of the current, produces it rapidly and vaporizes or cuts tissue. So that gives you a pure cut at this point, 100% on time, low voltage. An intermittent or interrupted waveform reduced duty cycle produces less heat, thereby coagulating rather than cutting of the tissues. In between the pure cut and coagulation are various blends of currents. Blended current is not a mixture of cutting and coagulation currents as such, but it's a modification of the duty cycle, that's the on time of the current. From blend one to blend three, the duty cycle is progressively reduced with lower cycles producing less heat. Blend one is thus able to vaporize tissues with minimal hemostasis while blend three is least effective at cutting, but has maximum hemostatic effect. So effects of electrosurgical waveforms, the critical factor as to whether tissue is vaporized or coagulated is the production of heat. Power settings and electrode size may need to be adjusted to achieve the desired effects. Rapid production of heat causes evaporation, whereas slow production of heat causes coagulation. Any of the five waveforms described earlier can thus be used to accomplish either the effect of coagulation or by modifying the variables that impact the tissue. So many surgeons routinely cut with coagulation, with coagulating current. Coagulation can also be done with cutting current by holding the electrode in direct contact with the tissues. And now the practical step, the knots and bolts as it were. For electrosurgical cutting, Tissue is vaporized by intense heat generated from electric sparks from the surgical side, thereby producing a cutting effect. To create the spark, 
the electrode is held slightly away from the tissue as demonstrated here. This produces the greatest amount of heat over a very short period of time, resulting in the vaporization of tissue, which we appreciate as cut in the tissue. Fulguration, electrosurgical fulguration, sparking with the coagulation waveform <clears throat> at a distance, co coagulates the, and charges the tissue over a wide area. The duty cycle is small, about 6%. So less it is produced, resulting in the creation of rather than a cellular vaporization of cuts, which is illustrated here. The electrode is served the way and spark is produced, which coagulation with a significantly higher voltage than cutting is most effectively achieved with the cutting current. Electrode contact is necessary. With direct contact, current concentration is reduced. Less heat is generated and cutting occurs. The cells dry, cutting does not occur, is cells dry out, forming a coagulant rather than vaporize and explode. There's direct contact here, less heat, and the cells dry out. It doesn't explode or cut. So the variables that impact tissue effect are the waveform the power set, the size of the electrode, the smaller the electrode, the higher the current concentration. The time, time of exposure, the time, the longer the generator is activated, the more heat is produces. The electrode manipulation can, can determine whether vaporization or coagulation is what happens. Type of tissue, tissue vary widely in resistance. h for example, have greater resistance than normal healthy tissue. So keeping electrodes clean of risk and lowers resistance and enhances performance. So a good grasp of these principles and techniques certainly is beneficial to, to bloodless surgical practice. Thank you for your audience.